Hi guys, it's Beverly. Um, I'm on here today to talk to you about my sock knitting journey. <laughs> now I know I'm going to probably get lots of criticism from the people that have made socks for years. But it's been a goal of mine to make socks and I have modified and come up with my own method. And I've given it a lot of thought, and I've made several pairs of socks, and you will see them in a clip right after this intro, and then after the clip you'll have my sock tutorial. Now, I have bigger hands, and I knew that I didn't want to use the two-point whatever needles. So, I knew I was comfortable with a size 6 needle. And I knew that I wanted to knit them in the round with a 9 inch um, <laughs> with a 9 inch and um, 9 inch cable. So, I made my own sock pattern which you are going to be introduced to in this tutorial and I bought the Chow Chai Gu needles which I'm sorry if I said it wrong these are the premium stainless steel um, Chai Gu needles and they are the red circular 9 inch US 6 needles I got them in Amazon I can link them below and what I did was I wanted the socks to knit up faster and I didn't want to use those teeny tiny needles so I decided to use the size 6 and to cast on less stitches than the patterns call for I also decided that I was going to buy beautiful sock yarn and um, I was going to let the yarn make the pattern. So when I make my socks for a one ply yarn, I cast on my six inch needle or my number six needle 48 stitches. If I'm using a three ply yarn that I want to make socks with, I use my six number six needles, but I cast on 44 stitches. I do a two inch two by two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two um, ribbing for two inches. Then, depending on what length I want to make my leg I make it five to seven inches I do a short row heel and I'm still perfecting that I do a short row heel I've done the Japanese and the German and for the foot I generally make the foot about six and a half inches from the heel end of the heel and then I decrease the toe and then finish it with the Kitchener stitch. And my socks come out between eight, a size eight and a size nine. If I want a wider sock, I cast on more stitches. So with a one ply yarn, I cast on 50 or 52 stitches. And that would make wide width foot. So that's how I make socks. And I realize that they're different than the real sock knitters out there. But I've accomplished this and I'm happy if, with my accomplishment. And this is my version. And thank you guys for watching. And please like. And subscribe okay next will come the preview of the socks that I have made and 
than the tutorial. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. It's Beverly. Okay, this is Saks Galore. <laughs> okay, I made another pair of socks. I made these socks. These are the socks that came out of the Mary Maxim Essentials. The color is called Wildflower. It is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. And I did have to go into the second skein to make the socks. Um, they would fit an eight and a half to a nine. They have a two inch cuff, a seven inch leg, the heel. The jury is still out on the heel. I love how it's turning out, but there's since a few issues. So the jury's still out. Then I have a six and a half inch foot. And then the last inch and a half is your toe decrease and your Kitchener stitch. So I love the toe, I love the cuff. The jury's still out on the heel. So I'm saving these, you know, for winter donation. Now, I started another one. Look, how, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Um, this one's done. Same size. This pair of socks, I'm on the second sock and the second skein. And this is 93 acrylic. 7% PBT. This is a number one super fine. This is a number three. I think I like working with the number three better. But I did use the same needles. I used the Chai Goo number six nine inch needle for both of them. I cast on 44 stitches for this one and I cast on 50 stitches for this one because you know it's a one that's a three and the sock came out the same size as the other one so that was good hi guys it's Beverly so today's tutorial is going to be me showing you how I knit socks I am NOT a professional <laughs> so stand back I'm not a professional uh, but this is just how I do do it, and I've accomplished it. I'm still trying to perfect my heel. I like to do the short row heel versus the gusset and flap heel. But what I'm going to do is show you my cast on and my ribbing for um, using the 9-inch circular needles. Sorry about that. And... What we're going to be using is this is some sock of the month yarn. Now, this was from Darn Good Yarn. I did not subscribe to their monthly sock, um, sock of the month. But what I did do was I bought three packages that have two coordinated uh, skeins in them. And the three packages were discounted. And I bought them that way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my own pattern, which is a 2-inch, two 2x2 two two knit pearl um, rib, and then I'm going to do a 5-inch leg and the heel. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and take the yarn out of the box so you don't have to do the crinkling. And then I'm going to begin my cast on. This is one ply yarn, so I'm going to be casting on 48 stitches. If it was three ply yarn, I would be casting on 30... No, if it was three ply yarn, I would be casting on 44 stitches. One ply yarn, 48 three ply yarn 44 hold on okay guys I was lucky enough to be able to accomplish a center pull on this little cake of yarn isn't it beautiful I was so happy I got uh, three different colors but they're supposed to be perfectly matched when they come out of the skein and um, each pack together there was three packs on a close out for $25 I think it was okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out some yarn here and I'm going to chain on or chain on cast on I used the long tail cast on and I'm gonna cast on 48 stitches so I start out by making my slip knot and I'm in a weird position here with this camera and as you can see the yarn is a little crinkly or whatever we want to call it but there's my slip knot and it's a little split and I'm so sorry I keep hitting that needle I have my camera propped up on a cookie tin if you can believe it with a picture plastic picture frame holder <laughs> so this is a really a low budget production here okay so I take my yarn I put it over my thumb I pull pull it in the needle and I pull it out so let's talk about it again okay over the thumb grab the yarn maybe I can come back a little here And that's how I cast on. So at this point, just cast on how you cast on. Okay. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera and do my 48 cast on. Okay. Okay, I got my 48 stitches casted on. Now, I just want to say, there are other tutorials on the web that will take you through the entire process of knitting with um, the 9 inch circular. I'm just putting this up there for a tip on how I do it. Um, this first row on any project is always a little fiddly so you're gonna watch me fiddle. <laughs> Now, the first thing you may notice is I have a stitch marker here in the middle. And what I do is after I've cast on 25 stitches, I put a stitch marker, okay? And that stitch marker is going to be pulled off and it's not going to remain, okay? But we are going to put a stitch marker here on our first row. Sorry for moving the camera. Okay, now... And I'm sorry about banging this. That needle just hit the cookie can again. <laughs> I am so sorry. Now, I have a stitch marker over here waiting. And that, our two. And that's going to mark our beginning of our row. Now, the first thing I do is I turn it over. I'm so sorry. Like I said, these are fiddly. And what I do is I move, I'm moving my stitches up and I also want to make sure that they're not twisted. Okay. And what I do is I separate my working yarn from my tail. So there's my tail and there's my working yarn. 
and I knit this first stitch back here. After I complete the knit of this first stitch, then I put on my stitch marker. So here we go. I'm in the first stitch and I'm going to knit. And of course you guys know that's real fiddly. And then I put my stitch marker on. Okay. And then in order to close that gap, I give my working yarn a tug on the second stitch and see I'm, I'm moving these up and I'm going to knit off the second stitch but I'm going to count that as my first stitch okay this first stitch I knitted was joining the row I placed the stitch marker and now this is the first knit stitch of my ribbing and the first stitch so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to knit a stitch okay and remember I said I pulled it tight when I completed that first stitch to close the gap between I guess some people call those ladders okay now I'm going to do two purl. Now for a lot of you, just seeing how I joined it there is going to be enough for you to be on your way. Because that was just my tip on how I join. And now I'm going to keep moving these stitches around so I have two knits and two purls and so I'm going to do two more knits and I did notice that this yarn split a little so there was an example of the yarn splitting and so you can see I don't have the smallest hands but I'm able to do this so now I'm going to do two purls And again, I just keep moving my stitches along. Um, and these are the Chow Goo needles, the 9 inch Chow Goo. And I already showed you the package, so you can see those, and I'll list them below. So as you can see, I'm just knitting and purling. Knit two, purl two, all the way around. And that's basically what I'm going to be doing for two inches. So that was a knit, so I have to come back to do my two purls. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just kind of moving these. And when we pull this in later, I promise that this will all close in when we get this together at the end so okay I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and finish knitting and purling my first row of rib and as you can see the stitches are a little tight but I just keep moving them around and don't worry about the gap or the ladder as some people call it okay so I'm back over here to the last two stitches, okay? So there's my tail, and we don't want it to go crazy and lose where we're at, okay? So these last two stitches are pearls, so we're going to just leave the tail. We're going to come over here and purl. And then we're going to purl this last one. Okay. I'm going to put my working yarn in the back. And I'm going to gather my tail and hold it, pull it down. I'm going to slip my slip mark, stitch marker and go right ahead and knit that next stitch. 
going to pull these over. And as you can see, and of course I need some more yarn, it's closed up between the tail and knitting that first stitch that we started with, it closed the join. Now, we're going to continue our rib, so I want to do another knit. And at this point, my tail and my working yarn are tangled together, so I can bring it over to my left hand. But now you can see, and so the working yarn is going to come forward so that I can use it to purl two. And I want to move all my stitches over to the end of the needle. And there's a purl. Whoop. Did it slip? No, it's good. See, I still have three. So I'll go over here and do my purl put my working yarn to the back and see so you can see how it looks okay so I'm just going to continue working my two by two rib until this measures two inches so I don't count rows I use my ruler and I measure two inches which is up here and then it wants me to do five inches of leg okay I wanted you to see me just relaxed knitting this okay and it just goes And move my stitches and do my pearls. And I like this because the sock goes so fast compared to using the magic loop. Okay, so I just wanted to see show you how I've been coming along here. And you can see my gap is closed. And so at this point, um, I need to do two knits. And two purl. I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to move the stitch marker and just move my stitches on around and there's my tail just hanging out and sometimes as I'm going along I go ahead and sew it in so then I go ahead and I start knitting the next row and see it just flows you don't have to do any repositioning of the magic loop with the larger circular cord and so with me using the larger needles and you following your pattern there wouldn't the stitch count would be different than your pattern but what I do is I just kind of make these plain socks and then I let the yarn do the design. Whoop. So hopefully that showed you my technique and give you something to think about and enjoy knitting socks okay guys there you go
Okay, guys, I have two inches, and I have my ruler here. Two inches of our two by two ribbing. And I usually put it right underneath the needle, and then I measure it. And I might be a little off, but what I do is I measure it in a couple of places to make sure that it measures two inches, okay? And um, now we're ready to do the leg of the sock. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep knitting. I already knitted the first two stitches in the next row. And you just knit all the stitches. Just keep going knit, knit, knit all the way around. And you can either do a 7-inch leg or a 5-inch leg. And in my previous sock, I did a 5-inch leg. And I just am so happy with this yarn. Remember, this is the yarn that came from the ball. And this, this is the second ball. And... It is coming out matching. I'm getting ready to start the gray. I'm going to be doing the leg. And I'm going to do it for five inches. So we're just going to knit. Just keep knitting. All the way around. And then we'll measure seven inches. And I'll be back. Okay guys. We have done our uh, seven inches in this case. And remember when you make a sock you can or the way i make a sock um you can do a five inch leg or a seven inch leg most of the time i do a seven inch leg but because this is the first time i used this yarn i wasn't sure how much i would have so i did a five inch leg on the first sock so at this point i have my two inch rib for the cuff and then I did five more inches make sure my stitches don't pop off I did five more inches to make the leg now we're ready for the heel okay now I you guys know I'm still just learning and you can see I have a little bit I did my heel and there is a little hole there and I'm working and I need to practice to try to have no holes but I like this method of making a hole and making a hole making a heel because I'm not really into the gussets which is another type of heel and see we're hoping that we're going to get better at that and not have it you know look so open but I have a sock I have a heel I am learning I'm not perfect okay so the goal of this video is just to show you how I make socks now there's different types of heel there's the gusset heel there's a, a wrap heel there's, you can, you know, Google or you can um, search on YouTube crochet or knit sock heel. So I'm going to show you how I like to do mine. And there's a woman on uh, YouTube. Let me get her name. Her name is Roxanne Richardson. And she does what she calls the mock row heel or mock short row heel and her video is going to be linked below now when she does hers she decreases eight stitches on each side and i'll show you what you mean in a minute well when i do it i do five decreases on each side because i found that that's um good enough and it works for me so that's what this video is about is what works for me but what we have here is we have a one ply yarn and we cast on 48 stitches if you have a three ply yarn you're using you have 44 stitches so half of 48 is 24 so the first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to, I knitted this first stitch of the next row because I didn't want to lose my stitch marker. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to count over here 24 stitches. Okay, I moved my 24 stitches that I'm going to use for my heel to another needle. And I left the stitches that are, were going to be unworked for the heel on my working needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the heel over these 24 stitches. Now, um, we're going to divide this up because we're going to decrease five stitches on this side and five stitches on this side. And then in the center, we have 14 stitches that we're going to work, but we're going to keep those. So the first step would be to put your stitches on a needle. I do have one of those stitch holders, but I can't seem to find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count five stitches and then I'm going to put a stitch marker. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to put it around the needle. So you have to bear with me because I'm not in that good of a position here. So I'll just pause it and put them on. So that's what you do with yours is count five stitches on both sides and put a stitch marker. Okay, so I got my stitch markers on there. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, knit all the way across until we have these last two stitches. And these last two stitches, we're going to knit two together. So I'm going to meet you back. I'm going to knit all these stitches. And then when I go it over here, I'll show you how to knit two together. Okay, I forgot to mention that when you go to knit your second stitch here, pull your working yarn really tight because we don't want to create any ladders. And I usually knit the first stitch, then I pull it tight on the second stitch, and that will help prevent the ladders or any holes. So we're going to keep going here and knit all the way across to the last two. Okay, I knit it all the way across, and I have two stitches left. So to knit two together, I just take my needle and pull it, put it through both of them, wrap the yarn, and pull it two. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work, and we are going to knit the first one on the purl side. So we're going to knit this first one. We're going to purl all the, these all the way across. And then we're going to purl these last two stitches together. So knit the first one, purl all the way across, and I'll show you how to purl the last two together. Okay, so now I'm ready to purl these last two together. So I'm going to take and put my needle in there. And so I have both stitches. Take my working yarn and wrap it as if to purl and then just drop those two stitches off. Now I'm going to turn my work and on this next row Let's get my working down, yarn down the right way. On the next row, we are going to purl one. The first stitch is going to get purled, and we're going to knit all the way across to these last two, and we're going to knit these two together. So purl the first one because we're on a knit row, so it's like the opposite. The first stitch is the opposite of what the row is telling you to do. Purl one, tighten up on that first knit one or the second, you know, 
and tighten it up so we don't get any ladders or holes if the best we can and then we're going to knit all the way across and then we're going to knit the last two together okay we're ready for the next row so we knitted those last two together and i turned so this is a purl row so that means i'm going to knit the first stitch purl all the way across and purl two together knit the first stitch purl all the way across and purl the last two together okay we're on a knit row wherever my needle went to and so what we're going to do is we're going to purl the first one we're going to knit all the way across and we're going to purl two together so we are making our heel you'll see it in a little bit so this row purl the first one tighten it up so we don't get a ladder knit across knit the last two okay now we're ready for a purl row so what we're going to do is we're going to knit this first one we're going to purl all the way across and we're going to purl two together okay so now it's time to purl this first one knit all the way across and knit these last two together meet you back okay so i'm on a purl row so i'm going to knit this first one go all the way across purl and do purl the last two together okay so i finished doing my last purl row and if you take and put these two together you can kind of see that you have your heel <laughs> I had it a second go position perfect but you can see that you've got the first half of your heel now we have to increase again and how we're going to increase is you're going to be picking up stitches under these little bumps and hopefully you guys can see the little bumps there's a bump there's a bump there's a bump and there's one down in here and they're on the bumps are on both sides and we're going to be getting them as we go so what happens now is we're going to be slip stitching the first stitch of every row the first stitch of every row is going to be a slip stitch. Now, we're going to knit or purl, whichever you know row we're on. We're going to pick up a stitch under the bump, and I'm going to show you how we do that. So, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to slip the first stitch you can get rid of the stitch markers and knit all the way across to the end and I'll meet you back okay so I slipped the first stitch and that was slipped purl wise so that means you would go in from that direction and slip it off pearl wise now I, for, I want to apologize if you hear any fan noises you know your girl has hot flashes and I've got the fan far away from the camera but it could pick it up now I want you to see on the side of our work these little bumps okay and what we have to do is we have to pick up that stitch under this little bump and if you look at it it has a hole right under there so it's like I'm 
just a little tiny, not that hole, but below it. So I'm going to go ahead and get my working needle positioned and show you what I mean. Okay? So there's the bump. Okay? And I'm going to put my needle in that bump. And see, I have two loops on there. Okay, I'm going to do it again because it slipped off. There's the bump. So I've got it in that bump. And now I'm going to, I got two on my loops on my hook. I got to get everything going here. That's, it's starting to knit it before I get a chance. Okay. So I go under there and I knit. Now, ideally, we don't want to stretch that bump, okay? Because that's what's going to make a hole. But see, you can see the little bumps. And it would be great if we could put stitch markers in there. But the idea is not to stretch it. But you can see those are the bumps. Okay. So now I'm going to turn my work, and the directions say to slip this stitch purlwise. So that means I come back here as, no, that means this way, sorry guys, as if I was going to purl. So I take it off like that, and then I'm going to purl this row. So you tighten it up and purl. And we're going to purl all the way across. And then I'm going to come back and help you find your bump. Okay. Now, these are kind of curling over towards me. But if you take a look right and find your bump. And see, we want to make sure that we pull this as tight as we can up here. Because this is going to make our hole. But we look for our bump, and see, there's where I'm going to be sticking it in. Because that's the bump. And like I said, ideally, you would put a stitch marker in there, but we can't. Now, to get it she recommends that we take the working the left needle, I'm sorry, and stick it in the bump and then use our working needle, kind of push it through, I'm out of the camera, and purl, okay? So I'm going to have four more chances to show you, and I'll try to make sure I'm in the camera. But we pulled, purled that last stitch. And then what we're going to do now is turn our work. Going to reposition everything. And we're going to purl. We're going to slip this first stitch as if to purl, which is like this. Okay, then we're going to turn and knit. We're going to pull this yarn ugh, as tight as you can. I can't find my right at the moment. It's under the sock somewhere. But I'm going to knit this next stitch and I'm going to pull it tight so that we have eliminate our gaps. Okay, so knit all the way across. And then I'm going to help you pick up your next bump. Okay, I knit it all the way across. And see, here's my next bump. So I'm going to take my needle, wherever it is. <laughs> this is so much fun, you guys. <laughs> take my needle. There's my bump. Where's my bump? 
I lost my bump. It's down here. Yeah, it's down here. So there's the bump. And we're going to take and stick the hook so that we get just two loops. So hopefully you guys are seeing that. And then we're going to take and knit this. Now we're going to turn our work and slip that stitch. Purl wise. And then we're going to purl this row. Pull this tight. And then purl all the way across and then we'll pick up our next one, our next bump. Okay, now we gotta find our next bump. So we finished the purl. So let's talk about what we have. We have a stitch here and we have a stitch here. There's the bump where they intersect right there. So, take a look at your work. I'm trying to get that needle again. You know how these needles are. So there's that stitch. There's that stitch. And where they this intersects down here is where we've got to get in there. So. And see, the, the whole time we're doing this, we got to keep from stretching it. There's a little tiny hole right there. I'm telling you, I didn't say this was going to be easy. So let's go right in there. Now see, I only got one part of it. And see, I got my glasses on. And I'm gonna just see if I can get it. Is it right there? No, because that's the stitch. We gotta get this bottom part down here. So, Hold on and I'll find it. Okay, I found it. So, like we said, this is a stitch, this is a stitch. But inside here is where we gotta go because we gotta get two. Right in there. And then we want to purl this. So there we go, pull this tight and purl it and I, there we go you guys, but you, the point is is you guys get the concept, okay, now we're going to turn our work and we're going to slip this first one purl wise and knit all the way across. Okay, so I went ahead and I picked up all my stitches using those bumps now we have to have 25 stitches 24 stitches on here and if you look at mine let me move this out of the way i have one more bump see the bump right there and look how big this gap is so i'm gonna go ahead and pick up this bump I counted my stitches and I have 24 stitches, but I got a bump. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up that last bump and then I'll join. Okay, so here is our toe. Is our toe. It looks like a toe, but it's actually the heel. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to put all of our stitches back on the needle on these work this you know little circular needles so that we can begin our foot because if you take it like this you're gonna have 
your heels. So if I hold it, see how your heels down there? So what we're going to do is we're going to place a stitch marker and, you know, the a round circle one. Wherever it went, I'll find it. But, you know, the round circle one that designates or whatever stitch marker that designates the first stitch of the row. And I'm going to put all my stitches back on the same needle. Now, how that's going to work is I'm going to knit them all onto this larger circular needle. Okay, so I'm going to slip this first one, and then I'm going to knit them all back onto this. Then this next row, I'm going to knit them all back onto our circular, because at this point, we're right here, and we need to go back around. Okay, so I'm going to put my stitch marker, my circular stitch marker, right here. I'm going to pull this little needle out, and I'm going to knit these stitches, so I'll be pulling that out and I'll meet you back okay so at this point I have the sock completely on these circular needles and I want to put the sock back on my nine inch so that it would be easier to uh, knit the foot and the toe but when we get to the toe we'll be coming back to these needles but right now if you had your, your stitches on any type of other needle to hold them, we are going to now put them back on to our 9 inch circulars. So I'm going to start knitting and then we'll be back at our 9 inch circulars. See you in a bit. Okay guys, I got my sock back on my circular needles. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. Hopefully yours went smooth. Okay, my yarn's around camera, but anyway. So it's back on here. We have our heel. Now, right now, you might, don't pull and stretch on it because you're probably looking to see how big your gaps are. Um, I am going to keep going here, and I'm going to make my foot and these pair of socks are going to fit a um eight and a half to a nine between an eight and a nine and what i'm going to do from the last hole that we have by our heel and i'll show you later i'm going to knit six and a half inches then I'm going to stop and then we'll do the toe. So at this point, you should have your needle, your stitches back on your needles. Now, your needle. And you would just knit in the round for six and a half inches or depending on the size foot you're going to make. So um, we didn't talk about measurements on the foot. Um, if we need to do that so let me give you the measurements so hold on okay so here's the chart that I use for uh, my slippers I have the women's and the men's okay now let's talk about the women and let's try to get this in here now okay so I'm doing it in here between an 8 and a 9 and what this says is to measure the foot in inches. So the whole foot, I'm trying to get this to focus for you guys, that the whole foot is like in the 10 inch range, okay? And then what this measurement over here is from the toe to the ankle. Now what that means without showing you my foot <laughs> is the part let's see how can we do this let's say this is a foot and this is my leg okay you guys and then here let's make this like this okay so let's pretend this is my leg 
So from my leg to my toe, okay? So from here to my toe. That's what we're talking about. So for the women's, now let's get this focused. It says that it should be a six and a half to seven. So that's what I come where I come up with the six and a half. Because when it comes away from the heel, in which I'll show you later, to the toe is approximately seven inches for a woman. Okay? So let me hold this up for you. So here's the sock. This is the heel. This is the leg. So right here. I, I hope you guys are having fun. Okay. So pretend this is my leg. So let's see. How should we actually do this? I guess we should do it like this. <laughs> no, I'm confused. But anyway. You know. Hopefully you'll know what I mean, because it'll make more sense later. Because we'll have the heel, and the heel, the leg is like this. Okay, that's cool. The leg is like this, and see the heel is on the bottom. I hope you guys are having fun with me. Okay, so here's the heel. Now there's the leg, and see there's the heel. And we're going to be coming out from here six and a half inches, and then we're going to do the toe. And that'll give us approximately from the leg to the toe seven inches <laughs> so hopefully this made sense because I didn't really want to show you my foot <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do so at this point I want you I'll come back and show you but approximately from here you could put a stitch marker if you wanted but see here's the heel and this is where all of our um, See right there and that's kind of where I measure from is kind of the last hole from the heel and then I make up the foot so I'll come back and I'll show you and I hope you guys are having fun with this <laughs> Bye. okay so now I showed you the woman's foot so now let's talk about the men's foot now this chart here normally I usually make a size 11 And it says that the overall measurement of the foot for size 11 is 11 inches. It says that the slipper measurement from the toe to the ankle, which I told you was the leg, <laughs> is 8 inches. So if I was making these socks after I made the heel, I would do 7 and a half inches a foot then I would do the toe if I was doing a size 13 I would do 11 I would know that the size 13 foot is 11 and 11 16 long if I was doing the toe I would do, so this is eight and three quarters, so what would we do? We would do eight and a half inches. I'm not good with math, you guys. Figure it out. We need a half inch for the toe. <laughs> so, and... This is for U.S. sizes. I'll link this chart below. You can see it's really good. Okay. Okay, guys, we're ready to do the toe. So let me show you what I've got here. So here's the leg of our sock. And we can, like, fold it. And you can see how the heel came out. Uh, again, I have these holes. And if you have holes in yours, I'm just leaving these holes. Because I'm wondering if they were washed, if those holes would close up. Because those are the holes that, where I stretched the yarn. 
They're not drop stitches, they're just that. But you can sew this up if you would like. Uh, if you look at this part of the heel, of course that's got to be in the way. See how nice that looks? But these are the stitches that were at the end of the row where we were turning it and stretching it as we were doing it. So I'm just kind of wondering if you could just pull these a little and pull it in. But I'm happy with my heel. Okay, I'm going to try another heel. And if I perfect it, of course, I'll, I'll let you guys know. Okay, now I transferred all of my stitches after my heel. I knitted for six and a half inches, six and a half inches. And of course, it's a little hard to show you, but there's our cuff, and there's our foot, and then here's our heel. Okay. Now, the I transferred the stitches over to. My size six circular needles to do the toe and as you can see I'm going to start doing the toe and what you have to do is you have to make sure that your heel and your toe are going to line up okay so you might have to Position your stitches. Let, so let's say that maybe this was twisted, okay, like this, because these stitches didn't line up with your heel, okay? What you would have to do, and it was not a problem because you have knitted all these stitches, what you would have to do is just position them so that the whole thing lies flat. See how this is? Because that's how a sock is. The cuff is here, your heel's on the bottom, and the toe curves lined up with the heel. So you guys should be able to see what I'm talking about. And we're going to make the toe. Because I did that one time. I got these, you know, kind of off sync as far as the beginning row matching even and flat with the toe and so I had to just you know maneuver the stitches around okay now having said that uh, you can pause the video and put your stitches on straight needles okay uh, it doesn't have to be well the circular does help but just so it's flat needles because we're going to have to maneuver and as our stitch count gets smaller for the toe it's just easier if you have a, a bigger needle or a bigger thing to hang on to now what we're going to do is we are going to decrease five stitches on each side okay and I'm going to explain how to do that so that your toe is actually going to measure 14 stitches just like your heel okay we're not gonna be doing all kinds of weird things we're just gonna be knitting two together knit two together and we're gonna knit two over together over here and two together over here and then on the back side as we're turning it around it's it's gonna go fine okay so we're going to decrease until we have 14 stitches remaining. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, I'm going to position this. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to pull this needle out. So that I can knit with it and we're going to put this yarn on the back side so when you knit with circular needles the working yarn gets flipped over the back side see how it got flipped 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to knit one stitch. There we go. I got it to focus. And again, I'm in a weird position here, so I'm going to knit one stitch. And I'm going to pull this up but I'm not going to pull it extremely tight, okay? I'm going to pull it up and knit my first stitch, okay? And then what I'm going to do is slip this over, and I'm going to knit these two stitches together, which is called an SSK. Slip, slip, knit. But I do it different than most people. <laughs> so what I do is I take my needle and I put it in the back of these two stitches. Okay. So see, I've got those two stitches over the back. Now, because we don't want any ladder, I pull this tight. I go around. I've got it really tight, guys. I go around and I knit that stitch and what that does by doing it that way is it causes it to slant in and that's what we want with our toe we want it to slant in and I pulled it tight so that we don't have a gap on the side of our sock now I'm gonna knit all the way across and again you want to kind of keep these first couple stitches pulled tight I'm going to knit all the way across the last two, and I'm going to knit two together, and I'll meet you back. Okay. Now, I'm going to knit these last two together. And I'm not saying that it's easy. You just get it in there some kind of way. And knit those last two together. Now you turn your work. This yarn goes over the back. This needle gets pulled all the way, and you got to fiddle with it. You guys hang in there to the end of this sock making. The first person that does is going to get a very special prize. And that way I know you watched the video all the way through. Okay. Now, we're back. We're going to do the same thing as we did on the first stitch on the other one. We're going to knit one. Knit one stitch. Now we've got to do a SSK. So I take my needle and I put it, and I'm not saying it's easy, but I get it on the back side of those next two stitches. So I'm going to try it this way. And let's get this stitch over here where it belongs. Okay. So I'm, I got these two stitches and I need to go in the back of them. There we go. I got them. See, I'm on the back side. Now, the first stitch I didn't pull real tight, but the second one I want to pull tight. And there we go. We got it off. Now, I got to knit all the way across and knit the last two together. Meet you again. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing what I just showed you. And to, until I have 14 stitches on both sides of my needles. 
And then I'll show you how to do the Kitchener clothes for the toe. All the way to Okay, guys, we're going to do the Kitchener stitch and finish off our sock. Okay, so we have all of our stitches um, down, and we have 14 stitches on each side, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut our yarn. So you don't have to go crazy cutting a great big long piece of yarn. Um, but I'm going to cut it. I didn't measure it. But you can see maybe 12 inches. Okay. Then we're going to take our needle, our darning needle. And this one's a little big for this yarn. So you could use a small one or this big one is just fine. And so we're going to spread, spread this. <laughs> We're going to thread this. <laughs> okay. And this loop here is in my way. That's why I have us knit with our other ones. But what we're going to do is we're going to do the Kitchener stitch. And um, the instructions for these socks are going to be listed in the description. But we're going to be doing... Um, step-by-step -step tutorial for the Kitchener stitch so this is side one here and we're going to knit off the first one so what that actually means is you're going to position your needle as if you're going to knit okay so you take your needle and if we were doing this with a knitting needle we would be coming over here on the left side of the stitch and it says to knit it off. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your working yarn is not wrapped around this needle. You know, you just have it come off straight. We went in on the left side of the stitch and we're gonna knit it off. So what that means is we're just gonna take that stitch and slide it off and then I like to just pull my yarn a little okay now we're not going to need this stitch marker anymore so now it says to purl one and leave it on so what that means is we're going to take our needle as if we're going to purl so that means we go in on the right side and we're going to pull the yarn, but we're going to leave the stitch on. Then we're going back to the second needle, and it says that we're going to purl it and take it off. So purl means you come in from the right side with your needle. You're going to slide this over and take that stitch off. But see how that one got real close to the edge? We don't want that to happen. So that one's on and that one's off. And see, I'm pulling it and it's closing in. See, these stitches are where we did our decrease. Okay, so we purled that last one and took it off. And what I forgot to mention is you need to do this where life is not gonna interrupt. Because believe you me, you'll forget what you did and then you'll have a hole, but of course you can weave it in. All right. So we purled that one and we took it off. So now we're going to do a knit one and leave it on. So that means we're going to take our needle and go in as if to knit, but we're going to leave it on and we want to make sure that the yarn doesn't get caught on the other needle and we want to make sure it goes around so this is really tedious okay see how I got it and we're gonna leave it on now the next we're gonna repeat what we just did which is knit the stitch so that on the front needle so it means we come in from the left side and we're gonna, as if to knit, and we're gonna pull the yarn, and we're gonna pull this stitch off. 
and we're just going to give the yarn a pull. And that will go in later, so don't worry about it. Then we take our needle as if to purl the next stitch. And we leave it on. Okay, there you go. Now we're going to go to the back and we're going to purl this stitch and take it off. So that one comes off. And pull, the, pull it so it comes in. Now we're going to knit this stitch in the back, so that means we come to the left. And we're going to leave it on. And we're going to purl the, the yarn. Now we're coming back to the front and we're going to knit this first stitch. Tighten up the yarn and take it off. See how we are? We're going to purl this stitch. My arm's shaking. I don't know why. And leave it on. I got the yarn pulled. We're going to the back needle. We're going to purl this stitch and take it off. But make sure this one stays on. And slide this one off. Okay. Give it a pull. Then we're going to knit this back one and leave it on. And you got to make sure you just get the sti that stitch. So you can pull the work down however you need to. So we want to purl this. No, this is a knit. See how confused you can get? Knit this stitch. And leave it on. Okay, knit this stitch and take it off. Curl this stitch and leave it on. Go to the back, purl this stitch and take it off. Give the yarn a pull. Now at some point you're going to have to take your finger out. So if you can try that. So we just did a purl and take it off. Now we need a knit and leave it on. You know, you'll know when you feel comfortable doing it, taking your finger out. Now knit and take it off. And pull your yarn in. Okay. Purl and leave it on. I guess I'm not ready to take my finger out. <laughs> Purl and take it off. And at this point, I gotta move these stitches up. Purl and that was a purl and take it off. So now we need to do a knit and leave it on. I'm gonna make sure the yarn doesn't leave. That was a knit and leave it on. knit and take it off.
pull your yarn, purl. Whoops, see how I got my yarn over the top, so I gotta pull that off. Purl and leave it on. Go to the back, do a purl, and take it off. Pull the yarn, do a knit, and leave it on. Come to the front, do a knit, and take it off. Do a purl and leave it on. Go to the back, do a purl, take it off. Do a knit and leave it on. Do a knit and take it off. Do a purl and leave it on in the back. Do a purl and take it off. In the back, do a knit and leave it on in the front. Do a knit and take it off. Pull the yarn. Do a purl and leave it on. In the back, do a purl. Take it off. Tighten it up. Move your stitches forward. Do a knit. And leave it on. In the front, do a knit and take it off. In the front, do a purl and leave it on. You can see my yarn got hung up so I have to pull it back. In the back, do a purl and take it off. And as you can see, I have more stitches in the front than I do in the back, and you might that way too, but we'll compensate for it in a little bit. So we did our purl and take it off. So we're going to do a knit and leave it on. We're going to do a knit on the front, take it off. We're going to do a purl on the front and leave it on. We're going to do a purl in the back and take it off. So we got to make sure we leave that one on. Slide this needle and get that purl off. 
do a knit in the back and leave it on do a knit in the front and take it off do a purl in the front and leave it on do a purl in the back and take it off do a knit in the back and leave it on and you can see I this one here isn't actually a stitch, but I still have a lot more, so I made a mistake. I will admit that I made a mistake, but we are going to fix it. Okay, so there's a knit. And take it off. There's a pearl. Leave it on. There's a pearl in the back, and we're going to take it off, okay, and we're going to knit this one and leave it on. Okay, and then we're going to do a knit on this one and take it off and a pearl on this one and leave it on we're gonna do a pearl on this back one and take it off okay and now we're gonna take a look at what we have here okay so now what we're going to do a, a knit on this one and take it off. And we're going to do a purl on this one and leave it on. Oop. Yeah, that was a purl. No. Yeah, that was a purl. And now we're going to do, I think, another pearl just to get it. And then we're going to take it off. And then we're going to do a pearl on this one. And this one is not a stitch, but we're going to have to do something with it. And see, look at our sock. We did a great job. We have just a little fluke right here. So I'm going to pull this through back this way. I'm going to take this and see if I can stretch that little thing back in there. If it's too big, we'll close it up. Okay. But there is our sock. And see how we did? We did a great job. And if yours came out even, hugs and kisses from me. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go through a couple of these, like so, and then maybe back the other way, you know, because I don't want to lose what we have. Okay, now I'm going to take my wedding ring off because I don't want to um, snag the sock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand, I've got my needle over here, and I got rid of the knitting needle. <clears throat> I'm going to take my hand, if you have any rings, take them off so you don't snack it, because I don't want to stretch this sock. So I put my arm up through it, and now I've got my fingers, and I'm just going to turn it inside out. Just try to do a slow maneuver 
and I'm going to take my needle, which I could have done that first, so let's do it first before we turn it inside out. Okay, so I'm going to drop my needle down inside here, okay? And I can put it in my fingers and then bring the sock out. There we go. Okay, so now I have my needle here and I'm going to pull my yarn and you can put your hand back up in the sock if you want to hold it. But see, I think we did a great job. I mean, this is good enough for me. I'm sorry. I'm not that perfect with it. Okay, so you can go up under there. And my needle always comes unthreaded. Okay, so I'm going to put my hand back up through the sock. And to go over here and grab this a little bit. And, and so I pretty much think we have our sock closed up. Okay, it's good enough for me. And so then I'm going to come over here and maybe gather some of these up and just go through a couple and then go back over those just a little, like one or two threads. Oh, I don't have it in camera. Sorry. So grab a couple of these and a couple of these here from our Kitchener. And then you won't have this on yours. That was that one that I had stretched. And then just go enough that you feel comfortable that you think you've got your end sewed in good enough. And then cut it off. Now I'm going to turn my sock right side out again. Okay, so here's our toe, and I think that's great. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I think that's fine. Now, I'm going to show you up here at the, calf, at the calf or the leg how I sewed this in, and some of the techniques that I do up here, you can use if you feel like you need to close your hole, hole on your heel or the cuff. Okay, so I'm going to thread my needle. All right, I take a look at what I have, and you can see this is kind of separated a little bit, or for me it is. So I just kind of go through those loops and kind of close it off the best that I can. And see, this is like anything. If you practice, you're going to get better at it. And the same with me. And I'm not giving up. Okay, so what I learned from another lady was these, she calls these, I think she called them ladders. And what you can do is you can weave in and out on top of those ladders, you know, one in and one out. And of course you can watch on your other side so you can see that. But when you stretch it out in the theme of things you really can't so you can go over the next ladder and then in and out in and out on your ladders and that's how she does it and then you can go on the next one 
in and out, in and out, just in and out, you know, pull it and cut it. And see how we've done our, our sock, that part's coming off. Okay, now as far as around here, you can use the same technique. But I'm not giving up. This is how I make socks. And if it helps you to make your sock, great. This is my sock. <laughs> Look at my toe. I love my toe. My heel. I'm, I'm working on it. I got a heel. My cuff is perfect. This is a five inch leg. I prefer 70 inch leg, but I'm happy with my sock. So hopefully this will teach you a basic sock. You can improve on it. There's another heel that I'm gonna try. It's called the shadow heel, but I haven't tried it yet. But I like this technique because with the gusset and all that other stuff, this, this is my way. So I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys try this. And I hope you guys improve upon it. Okay, you guys, thanks so much. I hope you liked the video. Please hit the like so that I know that you tried it. And because you guys went through this sack with me, I have a special giveaway. The rules are complete one sock using my tutorial be the first to email me at crochet six five two one at gmail.com have a United States address and send me your address and you will win the ice cream cotton candy yarn so I hope you guys have completed a sock Love you guys. Hope you win. Bye.